All right. Hey, guys, how you doing? Uh, so here we are oh, coming up on noon on Tuesday the 7th here. So I thought we'd take a look at the NASDAQ. A couple of reasons here. I wanted to follow up on something I was ranting about yesterday. And I just, you know, as we watch the NASDAQ just, just on this incredible rip and just defying gravity and every, everything you might imagine that could cause it to to falter up here, it just, it just rages on. So... Uh, I, so let's, let me let me start this way. Okay. So first, let, let's do a little TA here, and then we'll see if we can put together a trade. So I'm going to start with this. I've talked about this before, but we've got a lot of new people here, and I just perhaps remind you. People often ask me, so what's what's the deal with the trade devil? What, what, what's that all about? <clears throat> well, if you come over and you look at my logo here, it, this it's all about the pitchfork. All right, so when I was trying to come up with a brand and thinking of ideas for a name, something for you, something you could find that wasn't already used, I knew I wanted to, you know, in, in much of what I was going to teach was going to be focused around working with median lines and or a pitchfork, as it's often called. So as soon as I kind of put something like this together, you know, the the, the pitchfork, what was it? It was either me trade, you know, geez, who else uses a pitchfork? Um, Oh, Zeus, right? Uh, uh, Aquaman, right? So it was going to be a tough choice, right? So trade devils and trade devils plural seem to be actually trade devil singular, if you can believe it was already taken. So I had to go with trade devils. But my point here is it's all about the pitchfork, right? That's that's where that came from. Nothing, no crazy shit. Some people have had some unusual comments about uh, about the name. But that that said, let me let me just I'm going to just use the Nasdaq here to show you why. As I've said this before, median lines and or pitchforks, they're included in every technical package available anywhere, really. I, I don't know. I've never seen one that doesn't have it. Yes, probably the most underused uh, technical tool of, of any technical indicator or, or geometry indicator available to us. It's, it's so many people just don't use it, which, well, I'm going to give you some examples here about why you might want to consider using that. On every chart, every time frame, every single time, get the median lines on there because that's going to aid you, right? And my job here is trying to help you. All right, so I think the easiest way, so this is a one hour, right? Just the current, this is just the continuous contract, right? I'm just, so it's, you know, the COVID low here and then the crazy rip that's come off of that. Okay, so let, let, let's go back over here. So I'm just going to start on the way down here. Now I've got this set up here. So I, I'm just going to show you virtually every swing and every pivot. Well, here, let, let's start with the first one down. So I think I've got these set up in order. So let, let's start with the first one. Now I've gone in and I've di dialed these in. So they're spot on the pivot. So let, let's start with the first one. All right, so here we'll open this up. So the, the point I was trying to, I was just ranting on this yesterday, is there, there simply is no, there, a median line trade I, I propose to you is the single best probability in terms of a, a trade statistically reaching a target of, of any trade you can put in front of me. It's just these, these, these corner pockets, I propose to you, these are the best odds in trading, period. Now, right, so as I said yesterday, we can get into maybe some discussion about how um, options can can meet these these odds here, but we'll get there in a second, right? So, the, the all, so this is doing two things, right? So one, I've been harping on this lately just to try and get it into your brains. Okay, so we get a swing, we get a retrace. What do we have here, right? We have an internal retracement. What's our goal always? To get an internal that goes external. Well, so right now, so what I've, I continue to remind you guys, trading principle number one through Andrew's work is that once we have a pivot here, as long as this pivot holds, 80% probability of making the median line. We can say, well, oh, shit, that's pretty close, right? Is that close enough? Well, it doesn't actually tag it. Where do we tag it? Right down here. Now, so we anytime, it, I mean, this is this is universal, right? So anytime, whether it's here, here, let me stop that, or he, come here, or here, here, stop that, we have the potential for an internal retracement, right? The idea being that these go external, right? That's always the idea. Can I buy an internal retracement that goes external? Well, of course, as soon as we have that, right? As soon as we have the internal retracement, what do we have the foundation for, right? 
corner pocket trade. All right, so we do the same thing over here. So it's, th this is all, there should never be an internal retracement that you're considering taking that doesn't have a set of median lines uh, factored into it. All right, and you can say, oh, come on, man, that's a pain in the ass, right? Do I have to do that every time? Well, okay, all right, we're here, or it's, you don't have, you do what you like, right? But I'm going to just show you this here. You tell me if this would warrant your attention. Okay, so let's, let's go back here. All right, so from this pivot, 80% probability of making the median line. Well, you could argue that it's pretty close, but you don't get it, but you sure as hell get it here, right? And it goes to the, so you've got the 75 and the 25 here, the, so they're internal. So we catch it here, catch it again, catch it again. Now, as we move away, right, trend change. Okay, so there's there's the first one. So now, as we come off of the COVID low, let's, here, we'll take that one off so we don't declutter the chart. Okay, so right, you see it right off the bat. What do we get here? Swing, retrace, right? It's internal retracement we're hoping goes external. Well, what's the first thing I want you guys to do? Well, let me take that back. Okay, so along with checking for the FIB relationships to, <laughs> to see if we, if we have something technical, first target, boom. Along with that, I want you to put some median lines on that. Okay, so let's go. Here's my first one. Here's my next one. Okay, so what do we got here? from the corner. Now this did, doesn't quite make the 50, right? So we, it's not, so we get a corner pocket. Once we get the corner, again, as long as this holds, right? That's always the caveat. Boom, there's your 80%. You say, well, hey, look at that. It tagged the median line. It went, went through just a little bit just to get that algo target. You get a reaction. Remember, an algo target is not a sell signal. It's just you're anticipating the potential reaction there as the algorithms that were buyers here take profit. Now, you know, shit, looking at this, Maybe they use something lower. There's 50 to the tick. So it could have been that this was, you know, I'm on an hour. If I went down to a five minute, I'm guessing that second little pivot, well, I won't do it because we've got so many to get through. That little pivot was technical. So if we look here, we have 50 to the tick, algo target to the tick. All right, it goes on. There's second target, ultimately gets third target. All right, so I just, I'm trying to drive this point home. All right, I got a swing. I got an internal retracement. The first thing I'm doing, well, in conjunction, in conjunction with putting the algo swings on, putting the fib retracement, because that's where we're looking for to identify where we might get an algo behind us to support us. We put the median lines right on. So there's your corner pocket getting its 80%. So you say, okay, well, all right, well, that's okay. So two of them pretty fancy. Okay, great. Big deal. Well, let's just keep going. All right. So let's take this one off now. All right. So there's one. Let's just go to the next one. All right, so th we, we got our 80% here. So here's, do you see what I'm doing? The, the next, so this just carries on. Here's my swing. It just ke keeps going, right? Now here's my internal retracement, All right? There's my internal. We, I, what I'm looking for is for that to go in external. Now that doesn't have to go up to the moon, but I do get a break here. I get an external, internal that goes external, All right? So this becomes the next pivot low that I have to work with, All right? So as we do the same thing here, internal, internal, right? Stays internal, stays internal, goes external, right? So here's your 80%. From the corner, once we get the corner, 80, well, shit, it gets here, 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 here. Look, we, we hit three, four, four. Now, now we break, right? So that's how many row do we got so far? There's one down, two. So we got one, two, three, three here. Okay, so what do we, so again, we do it, just do it again. Swing, internal, internal retracement that goes external. Let's take that one off. All right, so next one. All right, you see it? Swing up, I get a clear five. Internal, stays internal, going external. All right, so from the pivot low here, once we get that pivot, look, we challenge the structure here, it holds. Once we get that pivot, well, it gets it here, bounces, bounces, bounces all the way up. Beautiful tag here. Right, look at the look at the reaction upon tagging up here as it completes that five. Right, as it completes, tags the median line. Boom, down we come. All right, okay, great. So that's four in a row. Well, let's just let's just keep going. All right. So what's what's the next one up? This one, this is the one we're in the, right at the middle right here. But this one, you have a little sweetener here. Right. This is one. Don't ever miss these guys. All right. If you see it, just don't even hesitate. Right. Just it's boom. Pull the trigger. Right, that is a golden corner pocket. Well, it hits the median line here, 
we get the algo target here. Now it's still still going, got legs, so it looks like it might reasonable target would be to get the 1618 since we know that's right at the golden zone. The negative 100 is going to be right on top of the 1618. So that's a reasonable target. You might be anticipating something like that. And then here I got to scroll, scroll it down. We're going up here to get something like that to complete this fifth, All right? So, uh, you know, we might, Elioticians might beg to differ on, on the count here, but this, if we're going into an extension in the fifth, if this is the three here, let's take that up a degree. If this is a, the, the three at the largest degree coming off of the one with an extension in the one, Oh, pardon me. All right, so this, this would be the first one, then we go yet into another one, three, four, and we're in the extension of that fifth, right? Now, I'm, I'm not saying so much about the, the count as it is about where we are and just how to use the median lines. I mean, you, you know, you don't need the Elliott count to use the median lines, right? You just need the fib retracements and the pitchfork, right? That's all you need. What is that, six in a row? All right, depending on the size you're trading, well, about 20K you made there. Okay, so again, always a function of size, how you're trading it, are you trading in the futures, are you trading in the options market, are you trading in micros or full size, right? There's lots of different ways we could trade this. You, you, so the, the alternative, if you not, don't wanna trade the futures because they're so volatile, we trade the QQQ. In fact, so I'm gonna put together a trade for you in the QQQ. So what, what do we got here? We got a trend that's just right now, it's just on, on a roll here. There's just, there's, well, we're at all time high. So there's no resistance up here. There's nothing to keep it from continuing on. So just, you know, in terms of putting together a trade, well, I sure want to pay attention to the, to, the, to the median lines as we're moving along here. Now, I am on a one hour. So for, for constructing an option trade, that's about as low as I want to go right, in terms of a swing trading approach. So I can just look here and say, all right, well, but it looks to me like something along these lines, pretty reasonable to think we, we're going to go up and get that third. All right, I've got a textbook one, two here. I've already tagged the first target. Looks like we could go easily get that. Now, that doesn't mean we're gonna get there today, but you know, if you kind of put something together here, now th this is the other advantage of median lines. It's giving us a, a, a time component. So I can look at the structure here and kind of, you know, I can, I can look at this and go, all right, maybe we get here if it's gonna stay on this angle. Well, that put me about July 20th. I'm gonna do something like this here for my four. Maybe that's later in the month of July and I'm getting up here. Shit, what am I getting over here? So let's get, uh, I can't remember if it gives me my dates out here. Yeah, so there we go. So this would be, you know, end, end of July. So by the end of the month, you know, I, now if I'm projecting here, I'm going to give it a little bit more room. So it, by the end of the month here, we could be up pushing, uh, you know, 1176, 78. I mean, again, I'm just I'm just using an, uh, the, the Elliott count here to kind of give me a potential roadmap. Nothing more. I don't have this for all shit. The guys, of course, right? This could be down here tomorrow, right? It, this, it's always just a, it's a forecast. Now, based on that forecast and what has preceded it, well, I can, I can put together a trade, say, okay, well, if this is gonna continue on this trajectory and, 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 stay, and stay consistent with this count, well, how do I put together a trade on here? Because just, just yesterday, I was ranting about not, not buying a, tr a market that's going up. Well, see, options kind of open up some, some new avenues for us as opposed to trying to deal with, you know, come here, tr trying to buy, buy somewhere in here, right? Because if we're waiting for a 50% retracement, ah, get off of there. If we're waiting for a 50% retracement, I got to sit here and wait. Right. If I'm waiting for this to come back down here and say, okay, well, give me my three. Well, shit, here, try again. Give, give me my nice little three to get me down here into my buy zone. Well, that assumes that this is, that this is if this is one, two, that we're going to yet go again, one, two, again. And of course, that would be very bullish. But in terms of forecasting this, well, how could I construct a trade? Well, if I wanted to do an option trade, <clears throat> Of course, I could do it in in the Nasdaq options, but I'm going to suggest because the <coughs> so so sorry guys because of the volatility and and uh, because you you may not want to park the amount of money that would be required to do this in the Nasdaq option market, right? So we, we might go over to the QQQ where we can do it with with equity options and kind of reduce the amount of capital that would have to be tied into a trade like this. So if I go over to the QQQ, of course we have the same thing happening here. So here's the same golden corner that's all, you know, all, all of those relationships, all exactly the same. So here we're looking, okay, so I know that's annoying. I gotta stop doing that. 
Those crosshairs are annoying. Okay, so we go up here. So this is the same idea. If this is one, two, that would be the one, six, one, eight, retraced to between the 23 and the 34. And might as well have a reasonable target up here. Here's the algo target. So upside target. So all, all I'm doing is forecasting that we go three, right? Let's stay by the book. 2338 reasonable spot and we finish up here. So I've got one, two, three. This would be the one, six, one, eight relative to the length of that one. Retrace for the four, go up for the five. All right. So I'm looking at that over a certain time frame. So here's where, oh, gosh darn it. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> okay. So here's, if I put that together, so I can go to my option model. So here's, bring this over here and right, show you how I would construct a trade using this. All right, so I'm going to go to, so this is, uh, this is option view. This is what I use for, for option modeling here. I used it forever when I was a broker. I'm very familiar with it. Uh, great product, something that uh, I can recommend to you guys. I'm talking, working with them about, um, Oh, maybe getting, uh, you know, kind of an arrangement with you guys here. So but I'll come back to that. So let's just focus on the trade. So I'm going, I'm using a trade finder. So I'm using the QQQ here and I'm saying, okay, in the next, between July 20th and August 20th, if the market's between 250 and 277, you know, I want to see some trade ideas that will take advantage of that price movement. All right. So just to kind of refresh your memory. All right. So here, here's 250 and I've got an upside target of 276. All right. So if I bring that back here so you can say 250, I'm just right. I went to 277. I think if you put it right on it, it would. So from 250 to 277 between July 20th and August 20, well, it's going to give me a whole bunch of trade ideas to consider. Well, I like to sort them based on best case return relative to worst case return. So I'm looking here. So best case return would be 906 worst case. Understand what that's telling you. If we're in that range between July 20 and August 20, the worst case return would be negative 114. The expected return would be 233. The best case would be 906. So if we bring this over here, let's see if I can open this up so you guys can see it. All right, so this, this is a trade I like because I like diagonal. So this would be selling the 265 put. Let's see if we open up. Let's see if I can open that up a little bit. Oh, that's closing it. There we go. Okay, I want to open it up so you can see it a little bit more. Okay, so here's one standard deviation from where we are. Here's current price. So I'm looking for uh, the this movement. So you can see it. It's two. We're we're at, we're look we're at mm, two fifty seven ish right now, and I'm looking for that upside of two seventy seven. So I want to skew this bullishly, but I want to hedge. I want to have a nice some protection in case I'm wildly wrong. So if I'm wildly wrong, well, the time decay of the nearer term option is going to be advantageous to me. So I'm, I've got a nice little buffer zone here. So ultimately, my break even is down here at, at 250. So if, if for it to break that, so why am I using that? Because if we break this level, that's the wave one, then perhaps this count is needs to be reconsidered. Now, of course, if this is one, two, and this is one, two, and we're in the third, we don't want to have a diagonal here. Where in fact, we can't have a diagonal here. We'd have to re, re well, pardon me. We could have a diagonal, if this is three, four, we could finish with a diagonal in the fifth at this degree. So if it's three, four, and we're going up for the five, yes, we could finish with a diagonal. So we could have an overlap. But if that's if this comes down here and we overlap this and we break the golden zone, boy, I'm gonna be rethinking the trade. So I wanna know that if I break this 250, I got an opportunity to get out and not, and not get crushed on the trade. So I, while, so this is 11 days here. This is the second one here, the second one here, right there. So at a, the, right here, if it's 11 days, well, I'm inside $140 of loss. Now, as time passes, so if we go to the next one, we go, so here I'm now on the blue one. I've got a bigger cushion here because I've got, if it's, if it's weakening and we're back towards that 250 level, the time passage of the near term, the August relative to the September is starting to decay. So that's why I have this little cushion down here of, of, of a bit of a hedge. But if I'm right, right, I'm also going to be losing on one and gaining on the other. So I've got you know, limits to the upside here. So if we go up to this 277 range, which I've dialed in, well, then that's that's about as far as I can go. I don't want to get there in a hurry. If I get there in a hurry, then I have to rethink the trade. I'm looking for this to be moving up over that period of time. Remember, somewhere in there, I'm anticipating the retrace of the four before it goes up to the five. 
right? So putting so putting that trade together, I looked at a you know, I looked at a couple of them. Here would be long the 285 calls. I don't. It's got to move too far, too fast. Now, while it certainly can do that. This, um, this is a, bu a butterfly, so we can do the same thing, but I don't like the downside risk here as much. Oh, what else do we have here? Uh, this was a condor, this is an iron condor, so we're selling a, a, a put spread and a call spread on each side of the market. Again, not quite as good of a hedge. So amongst all of those options that we looked at, this, uh, yeah, oh, pardon me, well, let's see, I gotta go back to, just because I looked at a bunch of them. Uh, there it is. Okay, so here, here's the one I like. This is the diagonal. So tell, selling the August 265 and long the September 265. This has the best risk reward. So if I bring you back here, I like that ratio between best case and worst case, and that's why I settled on that one. All right, so if you look at that again, just to bring it back here, so you'd be short three of the August 265 puts, but now you remember you are not naked here, although you do have exposure if you just stayed with it, right? If it's gonna just keep breaking down, you're gonna stay stay with the trade all the way to 215, right? We're, we're anticipating 250 or higher. If it's breaking down here, well, you got $700 of risk, right? So that, of course, I'm gonna assume that you wouldn't do that. So looking here, it's cost you about 800 bucks to put this on. I think expected return would be, you know, in the three to 400 range. So remember with an option trade, whenever you're introducing a hedge, you're reducing the upside potential, but it's a safer trade. So this is about consistency. So you put this trade on, you hold it for maybe six weeks, you see where you are. Well, even here at 33 days. You hold it at 33 days, as long as it hasn't screamed off too high, too far, too fast, and you're over 280, you got a nice big fat range here. So really you've got from 250 to 275, 277, big profit potential there. Of course, don't, don't be distracted by the best case return. You're never gonna get that. You're never gonna get the absolute pivot high and get yourself your 880. You likely wouldn't stay that long if it's really ripping up here. Of course, the other advantage here is you can you can add some additional legs to this based on what's happening technically. All right, so I'm just kind of trying to introduce how we go about doing this rather than, uh, well, how, we, I, I, how about we say it that way? All right, so I'm just trying to introduce that process in terms of how we use our TA and then go to the options market, use a model to construct a trade that would take advantage of that 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 predictive roadmap here that we're trying to use both the, the, the swing relationships as well as the median lines to guide us. So essentially what we're saying is from this golden corner, while that 80% is already realized, I'm looking to go up to the upper parallel, then retrace to the lower parallel, and then end up at that algo target at that algo target of 277. Right, so there you go. Lots of lots of fuel for thought there. Please, whenever you've got an internal retracement, I don't care where to th wherever it is. Now, ideally, right, it's at the 50 to 618 because then you have the potential for an algo to drive it up. But don't forget to put the pitchforks on. I mean, what did we get there? Five in a row that brought you got you 80% odds five times through the entire through the move down and the move up. All right, there you go. Okay, guys, talk to you later.